pretty suspicious. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Nick. Today we're gonna find out if Billie Eilish stole from a jazz standard. So part of the reason I know I'm getting old is because for like the last day or two, I thought the song was called My Treasure, but we're actually gonna be looking at the song called My Future. So the first time I heard this song, My Future, I was like, wait a minute. This sounds like Misty. Misty is a standard from the Great American Songbook, and it's played by a bunch of jazz musicians. It's like a cool jazz ballad. And the chord progression for My Future sounds just like the chord progression for Misty. So today I'm gonna be basically be going over both chord progressions and kind of looking at them side by side. And I'll let you make up your mind. Let's see if you think that she took this song. I'll be giving my answer at the end. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, stick around or like skip the thing or whatever. But yeah, we're gonna talk about these chords. So let's dive into it. So Billie Eilish's song My Future is in the key of E flat, and it starts on E flat major seven. So if we were to analyze this with like Shinkirian analysis or whatever, that would be a one chord. The next chord is an E flat seven. Now this is what's known as a secondary dominant and we would call this five, seven of four. Meaning we're taking from the key of the four. So if we're in the key of E flat major, the four chord would be A flat major. And so when we're using a secondary dominant, we're taking the dominant chord from that key of A flat major and putting it in here, basically to voice lead better to A flat. But A flat is still in the key of E flat major, so it's not super far away. If you're unsure about how to find chords from the scale, I have this video on how to find chords from a scale. So go check that out if this confuses you. But anyway, let's keep going. So the next chord is A flat major. That's gonna be the four chord of the key. That's what we're leading to. Notice when I play E flat seven, we have this D flat that leads nicely down to C in the A flat major seven. So part of the reason why she used that maybe is for good voice leading, basically having the voices go down in half steps. So far in the top voice of what I'm playing, we have a major seven, which is D natural, then dominant seven, which is D flat, and then C natural from the A flat major. So, so far we have a descending chromatic line. Then the next chord is, a flat minor add two. So when we make the A flat chord minor, the C goes to C flat or a B natural. So the line we have is. So you might think this is like jazzy or whatever that means, but we have some chromaticism. We have a descending chromatic line right at the top. Now let's take a look at the jazz standard Misty in the first few chords. So the first chord there is E flat major seven. And then goes to B flat minor and then E flat seven and then to A flat major seven and then it missed it goes to A flat minor and then it goes to D flat seven now the D flat seven is kind of like a five of G flat which isn't in the key of E flat anymore another way you can view the D flat seven chord is that it's actually just an extension of the A flat minor. It's really just a part of it modally. We're just kind of shifting our modal centers. One way you can view it is like going from A flat major seven to A flat minor major seven, which is activating melodic minor. And then when you go to the four chord, when you go to D flat seven, they're both within the same mode. If you're unsure about all that stuff, I have a video on the modes of melodic minor, so you might want to check that out. But then Misty resolves back to E flat, taking us back into the key. So if we compare the two, basically the only difference so far what we have is Billie Eilish avoided the B flat minor and went straight to the E flat seven. Now the B flat minor is acting as a two of four. So basically in Misty, they're borrowing the two chord from the key of A flat. They're borrowing from the key of the four chord. Basically all this is is to prepare our ears going into the four chord and kind of being like, hey, this is gonna be our home for the next one. It's like when you're checking into a hotel, it's like, hey, we're gonna stay here for a little bit, but it's not permanent, but like we're going to a hotel versus like taking your kids and just like throwing them in a room and not saying anything. That's kind of the difference between preparing a chord and not preparing a chord. Anyway, so the only difference is Billy used one less chord of preparation. But anyway, so Billy Eilish repeats this progression. Notice when Billy Eilish uses the A flat minor, she also adds the ninth on top. Or at least that's what the chord's doing. And that's exactly what happens in Misty too. Pretty suspicious. But then after repeating it for the second time, then Billy plays. You got this big G7 flat nine. In the melody, she sings. So she got she hits the flat nine there, making an altered dominant, which is the seventh mode of melodic minor. But the G flat seven is acting as a five of the six. It's 
leading to C minor. And usually when we go to minor chords, we want to use an alter dominant chord rather than a regular dominant. Here's the difference between the sound. This would be a regular dominant. I'm going to play a dominant seven with a nine and the 13. So it sounds pretty good. You know, we still have some motion going on, but if you play the alter dominant chord, it sounds like this. I'm going to play a G seven with a flat 13, flat nine. So we have that going to C minor. Voice leads a little better, you know, it's a little closer. So she actually activates the flat nine by singing that. So then we have a C minor, which is a six. And then B flat, which is a five. And then the next chord is really interesting. She plays an A minor seven. Now this can be interpreted in a bunch of different ways. For one, you can kind of say it's like an alter dominant leading to the two chord of C minor, which is D half diminished. Now the reason you can say that is because, for example, when we have the altered scale, you actually have a half diminished chord in there. So the half diminished chord could act as a five chord, sort of. There's also a few cool voice leading things. If we play the A minor shell voicing, we have A, G, and C. When we go to D half diminished, the G goes up to A flat. And then we have the C staying the same, the A goes up a fourth to D. So if you're leading to a half diminished chord, you can do the five of that half diminished chord and make it half diminished to kind of function as a five chord. So that could be one possibility. I'm not exactly sure Billie Eilish was thinking about that. I don't, I'm pretty sure she wasn't thinking about that, but it's certainly an option. Another way you can look at it is she just wanted to add some chromaticism. Basically she had six, five, and then the next chord is a flat five chord. Basically having do, do, do. And the chord next comes actually A flat major seven again, and then A flat minor again. So you could argue that she just wanted some chromaticism and have that bo, bo, do, do. It's a relatively popular thing. It happened in, for example, while my guitar gently weeps. That's one example of it. And also A flat minor leads really nicely to A flat major seven because the third and seven are exactly the same. In A minor seven, the way I'm voicing it, we played A, E, G, C, and A flat major seven, we have A flat, E flat, G, C. So the thirds and sevenths are the ones that stay the same, and the thirds and sevenths are the most essential parts of the chord. They're the defining qualities of the chord, so we just have the root and fifth moving down a step. So that's probably one reason why, there's probably many reasons why, but those are a few reasons why it works. And so anyways, that's basically the whole chord progression. Now, did Billie Eilish steal this jazz standard? Did Billie Eilish steal the chords from Misty? I don't think so. You know, they are similar, but like, there's also tons and tons of jazz standards that use the same progression. Adam Neely even has a video talking about why a chord progression can't be copyright, but you can't really copyright a chord progression or chords. There's something called the contrafact, which a lot of jazz musicians were using, which basically meant they were taking the chords from other jazz standards and putting a new melody on top. And because you can't copyright a chord progression, they were able to use it without royalties. So John Coltrane did this on tunes like Satellite, where he basically took the chords of How High the Moon and put his Coltrane changes in it. Or for example, his tune 26-2 was a contrafact of Charlie Parker's Confirmation, or Don Lee was a for a fact of the tune called Back Home in Indiana. So this is like a really popular practice that's been done in jazz, and I don't see why Billy's not also doing the same thing. And also, like, it's got enough different information, I think, to say that it's not the same. At the end of the day, I thought it was really refreshing. I thought it was a really cool chord progression that you don't hear a lot in pop, and there's like enough interesting twists to be like, oh, what was that? You know, like little, little like surprises, but it was mostly like, conventional. So if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this small analysis lesson. If you want to hear me do other analysis of other popular songs, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. I'm making new videos every Monday and Thursday on guitar related things, music theory related things, gear demos, all this cool stuff. So check it out. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Take care.